أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا وأن المساجد جد جد It is easy word وأن المساجد وأن المساجد ري لله 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 فلا تد فلا تدعو يا فلا تدعو فلا تدعو مع الله مع الله أحد أحد وأنه لما وأن قام عبد الله يدعوه كادوا يكونون عليه لبدا. Please place your finger below the words which you read. وأنه لما قام قام عبد عبد الله يدعوه كادوا يكونون عليه لب yeah, good job. قل إنما أدعو ربي ولا أشرك به أحدا. قل قل إنما أدعو ربي ولا أشرك به أحد Good job قل إني لا أملك لكم ضرا ولا رشدا قل إني لا أملك لكم لكم no it is meme come on little لكم yeah ضر ضر ولا رشدا قل إن لن يجيرني من الله أحد ولن أجد من دونه ملتحدا قل إني لو لو لن يجيرني من الله أحد 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 ولن ولن أجد من دونه 
ملتحدا صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم جا سيدنا كعب رضي الله عنه failure to join the Tabuk expedition among the منافقين منافقين means hypocrites who did not join the Tabuk expedition there were more than 80 persons from among the Ansar and an equal number from amongst the nomadic Arabs and a large number from the outstations. Not only did they stay behind themselves, but they induced others to do so, saying, Go not forth in the heat. Allah's reply to this was, oh. Say the fire of hell is of more intense heat. From amongst the faithful, there were only three persons who failed to rally to the Prophet's call. They were Murab, uh, Murarah bin Rabi, Hilal bin Umayyah, and Kaab bin Malik. Anhum. Murarah had orchards of dates laden with fruit. He persuaded himself to lag behind with the plea. I have taken part in all the campaigns so far. What possible harm would befall the Muslims if I miss this one? He feared the loss of his entire crop in his absence, and this prevented him from going out. But when he realized his folly, he gave away in charity the whole crop and garden too that had caused him to carry, tarry behind the Prophet ﷺ. Hilal's case was different. Some of his kinsfolk, who had been away for a long time, had just returned to Medina. It was for the sake of their company that he did not join the expedition. He also had participated in all the campaigns previously and thought like Morara that it would not matter much if he missed just that one campaign. When he came to know of the seriousness of his default, he made up his mind to sever all his connections with those relatives who had been the cause of that blunder. Kaab himself him gives, gives his account in detail, which is quoted in all books of Hadith. He says, I had never been financially so well off as I was at the time of the book. I had two <coughs> dromedaries of my own. I had never possessed this number before. It was a habit with the Prophet ﷺ that he never disclosed the destination of his expeditions, but he would keep inquiring about the conditions prevailing elsewhere. But this time, in view of the distance, the hot season, and the strength of the enemy, he had declared his destination so that the preparations could be made thorough and complete. The number of the participants was so large that it was difficult to note down their names even so much so that absentees could hardly be detected in the large host. The gardens of Medina were full of fruit. I intended every morning to make preparation for the journey, but somehow or other the days passed by and I made no progress. I was satisfied that I had all the necessary means at my disposal and that I would be ready in no time if I once did decide to do so. I was still in this state of indecision when I learned that the Prophet ﷺ had left with his companions. The idea still lingered in my mind that I would take a day or two to get ready and overtake the party. This procrastination, this procrastination continued till the time for the Prophet's arrival in Tabuk drew very near. I then tried to get ready, but again somehow or other I did not do so. Now when I came to look at the people left behind, I realized that there was none in Medina except those who had been condemned as munafiqeen or had been specially exempted from going for certain reasons. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on reaching Tabuk inquired as well. How is it that I do not see Kaab? 
Somebody said, O Prophet of Allah, his pride in wealth and ease has caused him to stay behind. Maaz interrupted and said, No, this is wrong. As far as our knowledge goes, he is a true Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, however, kept quiet. Kaab anhu says, After a few days, I heard the news of the Prophet's return. I was struck with grief and remorse. Good excuses, one after the other, entered my mind and I was sure that I could escape the Prophet's wrath with one of them for the time being. And later on I could pray for forgiveness to Allah. I also sought advice of the wise men of my family in the matter. But when I knew that the Prophet وسلم, had actually arrived, I was convinced that nothing but the truth would save me. So I decided to speak out the plain truth. It was a habit with the Prophet وسلم, that whenever he returned from a journey, he would repair to the masjid. First of all, say to Rakah, Tahiyyatul Masjid, and then stay there for a while to meet visitors. Now also as he sat in the masjid, the munafiqeen gave then placed before him on solemn oaths their excuses for failing to accompany him on the campaign. He took them at their words, leaving the rest to Allah. Just then I came and greeted him with salam. He turned his face with a sardonic smile. I besought him with the words, O Prophet of Allah, you turn your face from me. By Allah, I am neither a munafiq nor have I the least doubt in my faith. He asked me to draw near and I did so. He then said to me, What prevented you from going out? Had you not purchased the dromedaries? I made a reply, O Prophet of Allah, if I were dealing with a worldly man, I am sure I would escape his displeasure through seemingly reasonable excuses, for Allah has endowed me with the gift of the gab. But in your case, I am sure that if I appease you with a false statement, Allah would be displeased with me, and on the other hand, I am sure that if I displease you by confessing the simple truth, then Allah will very soon blow away your displeasure. I therefore make bold to speak the very truth. By Allah, I had no excuse at all. I had never been so well to do as I was at that time. The Prophet ﷺ remarked, he is speaking the truth. He then said to me, you go away, Allah will decide about you. When I left the masjid, Many a man of my clan blamed me and admonished me thus. Never before you had committed any wrong. If after making some good excuse for once you had requested the Prophet wasallam, to pray for your goodness, surely his prayer would have been sufficed you. I inquired of them if there were any more people like me. They informed me that there were two other persons with Hilal bin Umayyah and Murarah bin Rabir, who also had admitted their faults like me and received the same reply from the Prophet ﷺ. I knew that both of them were very good Muslims and had participated, participated in the campaign of Badr. The Prophet ﷺ issued instructions that none was to speak with the three of us. It is a common path principle that displeasure is shown where some attachment exists and a reprimand is given when there is hope for correction. A reprimand to an incorrigible person would be a futile effort. Kaab anhu continues under the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba completely boycotted us boy boycotted us Nobody was prepared to mix with or even speak to us. It seemed as if I was living in a strange land altogether. My own birthplace looked like a foreign locality, and my bosom friends behaved like strangers. The earth, vast as it is, was straightened. The thing that worried me most was that if I died in this condition, 
the Prophet ﷺ would not lead my funeral prayer. And if the Prophet ﷺ died in the meantime, I would be doomed forever with none to talk to me and with none to pray at my funeral. The other two companions of mine confined themselves to their houses. I was the most daring of the three. I would go to the market and join the Jamaat for Salah, but nobody would talk to me. I would approach the Prophet وسلم, and say, Assalamu alaikum and would watch eagerly to say, see if his lips moved in reply. After further, I used to complete the Salah by standing close to him. And I would look at him from the corner of my eye to learn if he were cast a single glance at me. I noticed that when I was engaged in Salah, he did glance at me. But I know when I was out of it, he would avert his face from me. who continues, When this complete social boycott became too hard for me to bear, I one day climbed up the wall of Qatada, my dear cousin, and greeted him with As-salamu alaykum. He did not return my greetings. I said to him, For Allah's sake, do answer me one question. Do not... Do not you know that I love Allah and His Prophet He kept quiet. Again, I repeated my request. But again, he would not speak. When I inquired for the third time, he simply said, Allah and His Prophet know best. At this, tears welled out of my eyes and he left me alone. Once I was passing through a street of Medina, when I noticed a Coptic Christian who had come from Syria to sell his grain, inquiring about Kaab bin Malik, when people pointed me out to him, he came and made over a letter to me from the Christian king of the Ghassan. Thus it read, We have come to know that your master has ill-treated you. Allah may not keep you in abasement and in disgrace. You had better come to us. We shall extend all help to you. When I read this letter, I uttered, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihoon. To Allah we belong. To Allah we belong and to Him is our return. And said so, and that even the kafirs and so my state and affairs had reached such an ebb that even the kafirs were aspiring to draw me away from Islam. I could not imagine a calamity worse than that. I went and threw the letter into an oven. Thereafter, I presented myself to the Prophet wasallam and exclaimed, O Prophet of Allah, your indifference towards me has lowered me to such an extent that even the kafirs are building up their hopes over me. When forty days had passed in this condition, a messenger of the Prophet ﷺ brought me this mandate. Be separated from your wife, I inquired, am I to divorce her? He replied, no, only be separated. A similar message was delivered to my other two companions as well. I consequently said to my wife, Go to your parents and wait till Allah decides my case. Hilal's wife went to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, Hilal is an old man and there is nobody else to look after him. If I go away from him, he will perish. If it is not very serious, kindly permit me to keep attending to him. The Prophet ﷺ replied, There is no harm provided you don't indulge in cohabitation, co cohabitation with each other. She remarked, O Prophet of Allah, he has no urge for such a thing. Since the day his ordeal has started, he has been spending his entire time in weeping. Kaab who says, It was suggested to me that I might also request the Prophet ﷺ for permission to keep my wife with me for service, but I said, Hilal is old while I am young. 
I do not know what reply I shall get and as such I have no courage to make the request. Another ten days passed and now our ordeal had lasted for a full fifty days. On the morning of the fiftieth day when I had said my Fajr prayer and was sitting on the roof of my house stricken with grief and the earth had straightened for me and the life had become dismal for me. I heard a crier's cry from over the top of the Mount Sula. Happy tidings to you, O Kaab. The moment I heard this, I fell prostrate on the ground and tears of joy rolled down my cheeks as I understood that the ordeal was now over. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ had announced the divine forgiveness for all three of us after the salah that morning at this a person ran up the top of the mountain and yelled out the cry that had reached me thereafter a rider came galloping to deliver the same happy news to me i gave away as a gift the clothes i was wearing to the messenger of glad tidings i swear by allah i had no other clothes in my possession at that time I dressed up by borrowing clothes from some friend and went to the Prophet wasallam. As I entered the masjid, the people in the audience of the Prophet wasallam ran to congratulate me. Abu Talha anhu was the first to approach me. He shook my hand with a warmth that I shall never forget. Thereafter, I offered my salutation to the Prophet ﷺ. I found his face beaming and radiant like the full moon. This was usual with him at times of extreme joy. I said to him, O Prophet of Allah, I propose to give away in charity all that I possess as thanks for the acceptance of my tawbah. He said, this will be too much for you. Keep a portion with you. I agreed to keep my share of the booty that fell in our hands in the Khaib campaign. He says, it is the truth that brought me salvation and as such I am determined to speak nothing but the truth in future. The above story brings out the following salient characteristics of the Muslims of that time. Number one, the importance of striving in the path of Allah. Even the persons who had hitherto faithfully participated in every expedition had to bear the brunt of the Prophet ﷺ anger when they failed to respond to Allah's call even though for the first time in their lives. Their devotion and obedience to the Prophet ﷺ for full 50 days, the whole Muslim community, even their nearest and dearest, would not speak to the three persons in obedience to the Prophet Wasallam's orders. The three persons themselves went most steadfastly through the ordeal imposed on them. This strong faith, Karb, was so much perturbed when he received the letter from the Christian king exciting him against the Prophet Wasallam. His words and his action at that time are a testimony to the strong faith in his heart. Let us search our hearts and see how much devotion we have in them for the observance of the duties we owe to Islam, leaving aside zakah and hajj, which involve the sacrifice of money. Take the case of salah alone, which is the most important pillar of Islam after Iman. How many of us are particular about it? Or you can call Shamin, it's his turn. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Aisha Amir 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, Alhamdulillah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ لا تسفكون دماءكم ولا تخرجون أنفسكم من دياركم لا تسفكون دماءكم ولا تخرجون أنفسكم وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ Okay, Shami, last time I gave an assignment to you, but you did not submit the assignment. Was there any reason behind it? Um, I submit the recording. I'm not sure I didn't receive it. Maybe. Let me see. You said to read as many pages as I could. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah you submitted that. It was, I think. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. You submitted. Yeah. All right. Good job. <clears throat> no, it was. Uh, Okay, yesterday you sk skipped the session, and uh, so what was the day? Is it Wednesday today? Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Ma antum haulai فُسَكُمْ وَتُخْرِجُونَ وَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ هَاؤُلَاءِ تَقْتُلُونَ أَنْفُسَكُمْ وَتُخْرِجُونَ وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ تَظَاهَرُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ 
the Lord. Oh my God. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Why did you say so much, man? The Lord Alayhim Bill It is, look, it is, it is Muharraman. Not Muharru, okay. it is Muharra. Wa yatukum usara tufaduhum wa huwa Muharraman alaykum ikhrajuhum. Wa yatukum usara tufaduhum wa huwa Muharramun alaykum ikhrajuhum. Afatu'minuna bi ba'wil kitabi wa takfuruna bi ba'w. Afatu'minuna bi ba'wil kitabi wa takfuruna bi ba'w. Fama jazau man yaf'alu dhalika minkum. Fama jazau. Yes, yes, yes. Fama jazau min. Sorry. Fama jazau man yaf'alu dhalika minkum illa khizya fil hayat dunya wa yawm al qiyamati yurdun ila ashad al adhab وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ all right, continue reading. Ula ikalavina stara ul haya. Sorry. Ula ikalavina stara ul haya tadunya bil akhira. Hold on, young man. Make sure. Uh, one minute. Make sure that you are reading wool here. Make sure you are not reading wool here. Make sure you are reading wow here. Make sure you are not reading hamza here. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Okay. Ula ikalavi nashtara bul hayata dunya bil akhira. Fama 
فَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابُ وَلَا هُمْ يَصَرُونَ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالْرُسُولِ Good job. وَآتَيْنَا عِيْسَ بْنَ مِعْرِ وَآتَيْنَا عِيْسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيْنَاتِ وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُوسِ أَفَقُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَحْرِمُونَ وَأَنفُسُكُمْ مُسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ Good job. فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ Good job. وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفٌ Sorry وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفٌ بَلْ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَقَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Now you tell me you have already read these pages in the assignment is it correct yeah so now does the do the words look familiar and is it more easier to read in fluency now yeah yeah this is the thing this is why i give you assignments good job man continue من عند الله مصدق لما معهم وكانوا من قبل يستفتحون على على ال يستفتحون على الذين كفروا فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم all right, I am not giving you any assignment now. I'm just requesting you to read, if you please, on your own, only to please Allah, not to make me happy, only to please Allah. Read as you wish. Uh, just make it a habit of reading the Quran daily. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah.